So perhaps you saw my story on Snapchat about the engine failure literally on landing. If not, you need to add me on Snapchat and I'll play that story for you now so you guys can see it. I guess the uh, best place to have an engine failure certainly uh, is on the ground though. Uh, but we have a mechanic come out and try to troubleshoot it. Doing a flight review for a friend. First landing on rollout, uh, the engine quit. Literally, we just uh, touched down, rolled maybe four or 500 feet. We're gonna make it a full stop taxi back and the engine just cut. Sometimes the best decision is just to call somebody. There's Ashley. Let him come pick you up and take you home. So the day really, that was the end of the day. The day started out much crazier than that. I was doing a flight review uh, for a friend and we were just gonna go out, have a good time, nice and easy, nothing, nothing too major to worry about. And I show up to the airport and I see him up underneath the plane and he's got tools out and a bucket. And I'm thinking, this, this doesn't look like a normal pre-flight. So I walk over and actually the little, the valves that we sump on in this, it was a, it was a Piper Arrow. Um, he was sumping and the fuel just, they stuck and just kept running and running. So he's got the big five gallon bucket out there. He's got the tools trying to stop it. So we go and I come over and I get my Gats jar and I've learned from over the years of having that happen. You just kind of pop it up there and get the valve to reseal. Still probably a, a bad valve, but we get it to set a little bit better and we stop that one. And we're talking and he continues his pre-flight and sure enough, he goes around to the next valve on the left wing and comes around and goes to check that one. Exact same thing. So he goes to do that and I find out later as I'm watching, what are the odds of both valves sticking like that? I find out later that the airplane has sat the last eight months and anytime an airplane sits, I kind of get that feeling. I, I, like a boat, like a motorcycle, airplanes need to run. The best way to get an airplane to TBO, it's, it's recommended overhaul time and, and exceed it is to fly it every single day. As silly as that sounds, these things need to run. When airplanes sit, they experience problems. So we, we fix that and we stop the, the leak and everything seems fine. We kind of add it to the squawk list of, of things to fix this week. Great, um, we've got that. Other than that, the pre-flight inspection is fine. We go, we get in the airplane, we take off and, and everything, everything seems good. It's a hot Florida summer day. Um, and we're going, we get over the Williston Airport. And we're over Williston, we're at 3,000 feet, and I decided, let's give him a simulated engine failure. Williston has a great little restaurant. Uh, so I pull his power on back, I figure we'll do a simulated engine failure, we'll land, we'll go in, we'll have lunch, we'll do our, our groundwork over lunch. It's gonna be a great, uh, nice, easy flight review. So I pull his power back, he's making great decisions, he gets on the downwind for the right runway after judging the wind. Um, everything's looking great, he's a little bit high, which if you've flown a Piper Arrow, you know being a little bit high is actually a good thing because arrows just sink like a rock when they come in. And he's feeling pretty good, we're about, we're on downwind, we're at 2,000 feet, so he's going, gosh, I am high, I should think about getting the gear down here soon, and that's gonna help slow me down and get me down as well. And he goes and moves the landing gear down, and nothing. And normally when you when you put the landing gear down an arrow, you kind of you hear the electrical system work and you hear the gear pump click on, then most importantly you feel that drag. Literally, you're sitting like this in your seat and you kind of go forward in your seat. And there's nothing. And I remember him saying, I, you know, it has it's been eight months since I flew, but the gear doesn't take this long to, to come down. And I said, You're right. And we have, you know, nothing, gear on safe light is on, none of the three green lights are on. It's the moment where your heart kind of sinks for a second. You're going, okay, let's, let's troubleshoot this here. We bring the gear up, we try to bring it back down, we cycle it. One more time, up and then cycle it down, nothing. And I start, um, as I'm asking him, have you ever done an emergency gear extension in, in your arrow, as I'm asking them this? And I'm checking the circuit breakers and, and everything. All the circuit breakers are in. But I, I look and I see the gear pump is a, is a you know, push to reset. So I do have the ability to pull it. So I, I pull it out and I push it back in and you hear it and you see the, the amps kind of jump for a second on the ammeter and we put the gear down and the gear successfully comes down. We feel the drag, we see the, the gear and transit light, we see the three green lights and we're, we're feeling a little bit better about ourselves. But still, you're just, you've heard me talk about the chain of events of an accident that lead up to it. And I'm, in my head, I'm thinking that 
kind of started with this fuel issue and 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 he kind of was frustrated with that then this gear thing happens and it's just thing upon thing and you start getting frustrated with this airplane that was fresh out of maintenance you just expect everything to work but that's not always the case so we come in and we land and we have a nice lunch and finish up the groundwork go back out fuel up the airplane hop in the airplane starts up it takes a little bit of effort to start up but nothing nothing too major nothing like a just a normal hot start in florida typical stuff we do every day and we we go to taxi on out he's doing his run up and he goes to line up the heading indicator and the magnetic compass and goes to push it in and it's just spinning that can't can't get it to uh, attach to to line it up as he as he pushes in. the heading mug works fine but the other knob to actually make that adjustment isn't working and he says to me jason i just had this overhauled and he's, he's really frustrated at this point. You can tell just thing after thing from, from the fuel selector valves in here. It's 95 degrees in Florida and you're up underneath this wing trying to solve this problem and you're sweating and then you're going to do this flight review which is important to you and you want to be able to perform well. Then the gear issue, then the head indicator issue. And again, you can see these chain of events all lining up. And I'm asking him, I said, listen, are you okay? Are, 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 you, are you fit to make this flight? And it's a mental thing sometimes, isn't it? Just with all these frustrations that pile up, sometimes it's time to just say, no more. Well, we finish our run up and he says, yeah, Jason, I'll be fine. Let's just, maybe we'll just fly back to Ocala and we'll, we'll pick this up another day. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a good idea. I think that's fine, let's do that. So we go and we take off runway five at Williston, full power, rolling down the runway, things are looking great. And we rotate and we're climbing out and we're climbing out and I hear the stall warning horn going off. And I'm thinking, that's, that's weird. I mean, I know it's Florida, it's 90 degrees outside. We just fueled up. It must be a weight and density altitude type thing. Um, that's gotta be what it is. And I'm looking over and we are climbing out. Our airspeed was fine. We're climbing out like 85. I'm like, how am I climbing out at 85? But I'm hearing the stall warning horn going off, but the airplane just, doesn't feel like it's climbing. Have you ever just, uh, I share this a lot with my students, I share it with you guys sometimes, certainly with our online ground school members, that flying an airplane is a lot about feel and listening to that airplane. And we're climbing out, it just didn't feel like the airplane was giving us all that the airplane was capable of. And I look at the tachometer and the RPMs are at like 22, 2300 RPMs, when normally it's 2500 full power. The vertical speed is showing us climbing at 300 feet per minute. In my mind, I'm thinking, is this something to be concerned with, or is this just is this a byproduct of just a hot day and full fuel? That little, you know, that that uh, that voice, uh, that small voice inside your head says, you know, like, let's just keep it close. Let's do a lap in the traffic pattern here. So he agrees to that, and we climb out. Sure enough, we don't reach traffic pattern altitude until we're at. A thousand feet or a thousand feet on the midfield downwind thousand feet AGL normally in that airplane I mean earlier when we were flying we were we'd be upwind turning crosswind reaching traffic pattern altitude it's a it's an arrow it's a retract airplane it's very it's a fast little airplane t-tail everything else and we didn't reach it till the midfield downwind point that we reached traffic pattern altitude and he and I both said man it is just climbing so slow we chopped it up for, geez, it's just a hot day. We have full fuel. That's got to be what it is. But still, we, we're smart enough to at least keep it in the traffic pattern. So we go, and he gets a beam as touchdown point and kind of has fallen behind the airplane a little bit. Again, you haven't flown eight months. We, we deal with rusty pots all the time. It, it, we saw We saw some of that rust. So by the time he's turning base, I'm realizing we are really, really high. Even if he turns out, I know an arrow likes to fall out of the sky sometimes, but we are even too high to bring this thing on in. So um, we're kind of debating, go around. He gets it back, it back in line a little bit. And I say, listen, you're committed to this landing, obviously, but let's make it a full stop here. Let's make it a full stop and we'll just taxi on back because you're going to leave five, six, seven hundred feet of good runway behind you. Yeah, runway five at Williston is a long runway, but I like every little bit of runway. So we're coming on in and we touch down. He agrees it's gonna be a full stop taxi bag. He takes the, the flaps out and goes to get up on the brakes. And just like that, the prop just cranks, cranks and stops. And that sight you never wanna see when you're in the airplane, the blade is just standing still. Now, of all the places to have an engine failure, we picked a pretty good place to have an engine failure now, didn't we? On, on the ground, on landing, on rollout. But we're rolling out and 
he brings the airplane to a stop and first my eyes go right to the mixture. Mixture's rich. And I look over the fuel selector valve and it's on, it's all, we just got fuel, it's on the fullest tank, everything's something fine, everything was great. I'm thinking, what could have gone wrong? And then my, my mind is thinking, I'm in the middle of the runway right now. So I quick hop out of the airplane, I get on the wing and start pushing it as he kind of goes to steer us off the runway. I ask for my handheld radio as we're calling the FBO, let them know, hey, we're gonna need some help getting off this runway. And you just think back to the, to the day, and it started with this fuel issue, this, this leak of the, of the fuel sump valve, then this weird landing gear issue, and then landing and having an engine failure on rollout of all strange places. Thankful it happened there, but how strange. And then we, we go over to the, to the mechanic, they, they tow us over, and we go over to the mechanic, and the mechanic hops in, and the airplane just fires up. Like, like nothing ever happened. And he idled it and everything was good. And the mechanic, just the mechanic right there, couldn't find anything wrong with it. I'm thinking to myself, there is no way I'm getting back in that airplane. So sure enough, I get on the phone and I call my wife, Ashley. I say, Ashley, how do you feel about a road trip? And Ashley knows I've done this to her many a time. She's come to get me when I'm stranded somewhere. That although this mechanic hopped in there and said, ah, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, he wasn't our mechanic. I've never met the gentleman before. I don't know. I'm sure he's a great mechanic, but I don't, I don't know that. I've never met the person before. And yeah, it fired up fine, but it's just thing after thing after thing. And in aviation, you only get so many little warning flags. You only get so many things. So we decided that, listen, airplanes stay in here, uh, and I'm going home. Uh, uh, Ashley's coming to get me, and we're taking a car home. And it's hard to make those decisions sometimes, especially as a flight instructor. It's hard to tell your student, like, I'm not getting in that airplane again. I, I apologize. It's just I don't want to go flying. That's a, that's a hard decision to tell somebody. But choosing to drive is never a bad decision. Choosing to stay on the ground is never a bad decision. You may be ridiculed. I remember back in my college days when I'd make some decisions like, I just don't feel comfortable flying. And your, your friends at the aviation college I was at would kind of rag you. Oh, don't worry about it. It'll be okay. But you think, you know, I'm thankful I made those decisions to stay on the ground. We know that every accident is a chain of events. It could start weeks, months before, or it could start with, your fuel valve is leaking and you, you have to get it fixed and you're sweating and then you're kind of grumpy and then the gear issue, then the head indicator issue, then this random engine failure on rollout. And you see these chain of events and, and the last chain could have been an accident. It could have been Jason had all these flags, all these little things that happened, but still somehow decided to get back in that airplane just because some mechanic said, I don't see anything wrong with it. Sure, fly it back home to Ocala. But it's always a smart decision to stay on the ground. And that is really the message I wanted to share with you guys. You guys, the M0A Nation, you are not only the reason we fly, but you're the reason we do what we do to try to make you guys safer, smarter pilots. Hopefully you'll take this, and the next time you're presented with a situation like that, you make the same decision. I'm staying on the ground, I'm calling somebody. Staying on the ground is always a smart decision. Pass your check ride or I'll pay for it. Join our number one rated online ground school and participate in live mock check rides and interactive written test prep. Visit groundschoolacademy.com to learn more.